Looking for somebody who could save him Instead of searching inside for what they gave him A strong will, strong mind causes mayhem We could change the world, change time the boy found inside of a bassinet box is finally identified after 65 years. It is one of Philadelphia's oldest unsolved cases. The little boy will finally have his name on his tombstone. Come join me in the Murder She Shed for this breaking case. And welcome to the Murder She Shed. My name is Holly. Although I do a few breaking cases, I usually discuss rarely heard cases in my She Shed. So if you get bored of listening to repeat cases, hit that subscribe to join me in my she shed usually two times weekly. Now let's discuss this case that's finally solved after 65 years, the most enduring mystery to ever perplex Philadelphia detectives. It came to light on the evening of February 23rd, 1957, when a LaSalle College student parked his car off Susquehanna Road and began to hike across a vacant lot in the drizzling rain. The unnamed young man, various newspapers report his age between 18 and 26, was a peeping Tom and he was en route to spy on the inmates of the nearby Good Shepherd home, a Catholic residence for wayward girls. But what he found as he walked across the overgrown lot that night would destroy any interest that he had in looking in young girls' windows. It was a cardboard box, seemingly innocuous, until he looked inside and saw that a small corpse had been wedged into it. Terrified, he forgot about the undressed women that he had come to see. He turned and ran back to his car, frightened and and embarrassed, the man confessed his discovery to his priest the next day, and he was told that he needed to call the police. So first, before he went to tell police, he concocted a different tale. He didn't want to be known as a peeping Tom, and he said he found this box while chasing a rabbit through the weeds. The officers were sent to investigate. The patrolman who arrived at the vacant lot on February 24th found a large cardboard carton lying on its side open at one end. The box had once held a baby bassinet from J.C. Penney's. Inside the box was a small boy, his pale white body wrapped in a cheap imitation Indian blanket. They searched the lot and 17 feet from the box discovered a man's cap made from royal blue corduroy with a leather strap and a buckle on the back. A beaten path through the weeds and the underbrush led directly from the cap to the cardboard coffin. An autopsy was performed on the boy by Dr. Joseph Spellman, Philadelphia's chief medical examiner at the time. His report placed the boy between four and six years old. He had blue eyes and light blonde hair that had been badly cut, close shorn in some areas of his head, shaved almost to the skull in others. He was 41 inches tall and weighed only a pathetic 30 pounds at the time of his death. Dr. Spellman cited the cause of death was a savage beating that left the boy's body and face covered in fresh bruises. Spellman attributed the boy's death to head trauma, probably inflicted with a blunt instrument, but he could not rule out that damage had been by pressure, which prompted some of the investigators to suggest that fatal damage had been inflicted by someone squeezing the boy's head when he was given his last blotched haircut. Detectives clothed the boy and photographed his battered face in hopes that they might be able to learn his name. But those hopes slowly died with the passing years up until today, when they are now able to use genetic technology to solve old cases. The case went cold, silent, and deathly still until November of 1998 when the boy in the box was exhumed in order to extract DNA samples. They were collected for future comparison with any suspected relatives. A year later, before the authorities finally admitted that they had not been able to obtain a satisfactory DNA profile from the boy's remains, another attempt was made in 2000, this time from the boy's teeth, but this attempt also failed. A second attempt, though, was reported as successful in April 2001. This DNA was used through genealogy technology, and the boy was identified as Joseph Augustus Zarelli. 
He finally has a name after 65 years. The identity is known, but as of now, the case is still unsolved. Joseph was born on January 13, 1953, and is believed to be from West Philadelphia. Joseph has a number of siblings on both the mother and father's side who are still living. Police say they do have their suspicions of who is responsible for his homicide. Joseph's DNA was so severely degraded that it took two and a half years to get the identity of this young boy. There is a standing 20000 k reward for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of a suspect. Joseph's parents are deceased. They may be able to get the identity of the suspect from DNA left on the hat found near the crime scene. The man responsible for making the hat described the suspect as a blonde man in his 20s who paid for the hat in cash. They believe the boy died by blunt force trauma. I have found names of who could have possibly been his parents, and they are Augustus Zarelli and Cynthia Zarelli. It is not a confirmed fact at this point, but considering this man's name is identical to the boys and both from the Philadelphia area, I would think the potential could be likely. The man's name was Augustus J. Zarelli, where the boy's name is Joseph Augustus Zarelli. So, uh, odds, I would say, are pretty big. It's just an easy Google search for the obituary, so just in case I am wrong, I won't put pictures of these individuals on my video. Augustus, who could be Joseph's father, died in 2014, and Cynthia, possibly the mother, died in 2018. Oddly enough, a man's white handkerchief with the letter G in the corner was found near the crime scene, and the possible father's nickname was Gus. The psychic that police used during the investigation, Joan Durham, stated a man was the suspect and she talked about his nose. This picture of the potential father, Augustus, his nose appears to have a scar down it. This is just some interesting bits of info that I had observed, but I wanted to point out not facts at this point. I just want to make sure everybody knows this is something I just observed. Authorities did not release his parents' name. And although I usually stick to all facts on my channel, this information I sleuth online was just too intriguing not to point out. Although I want to emphasize this was just things that I had observed just in the first few minutes online. And some extremely weird coincidences. Yeah, obviously very strange. Seems like they could be linked to me. All right, guys, I just wanted to give a quick update on this case since it, like the Lady of the Dunes that was just solved, and I have a video on that as well, is a well-known case. Investigators have been trying to solve this case. I mean, like hundreds of investigators through the years have tried to solve this case. And finally, we have a name, and I think it will go quickly after that. I mean, if I can find that in the first few minutes... I'm pretty sure it will be solved, and we will know who the suspect is soon. Like I said, no one is guilty at this point. just want to point that out again. I don't want to get in trouble for this one. All right, I love you guys, and I hope you all have an amazing day and a blessed week. And just be kind to those around you. Love those people around you, and give them your best. All right, I love you all. Out of here. You could try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best.